Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. It's the Opposition Preview. I'm joined by Nicky from West Ham Fan TV, who has very graciously given up his time to talk once again about West Ham, which I imagine, mate, has been a little bit of a chore <laughs> in recent weeks. Yeah, it's becoming a little bit of a chore, Paul. Um, I'll be honest with you, mate. I love you to pieces. I love you and Chris, but you are the last people I really want to see right now. <laughs> preview the game, to be honest. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. The um, Yeah, I... I I find the West Ham situation mad, mate, because the problem is, I, 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 I was talking about this in the office the other day, is I'm torn because I really like you guys, but I really dislike David Moyes and I really dislike West Ham's owners, especially Karen Brady, who I think is a massive knobhead. And, um, and so these people deserve everything that's coming to them. But, I, but ultimately, this is the thing about football. It's the fans, and people forget this at times. It's like... You, you guys are being subjected to this. I, I, yeah, it, it sounds like you don't want my sympathy, like, but you know, it, I, I, I can't help but imagine it being a, it's a bit of a shitty situation at the moment. It, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Paul. We, we don't deserve it as fans. We don't deserve it. Although many people, you know, dislike the club. And, uh, do you know, we used to be everybody's second club. They're, they're, actually, somebody's sort of like re- released the film at the moment. Um, called Everybody's Second Club. We used to be that. And then probably about 15 years ago, we started to become the villains yeah. a little bit with Tevez Saga and, and everything else. Then these two took over. And then there's a whole debacle with the Olympic Stadium and, and everything that goes around that. And obviously taxpayers are, are very upset with the deal. I'm upset with the deal as a taxpayer myself. Um, I don't like the stadium. I've never wanted to move from, from Upton Park. I started to get sold on it when we got sold a few lies. But we as a club are getting everything we deserve. Yeah. The fans are not, but the club, the way it's run, the people that, that they've got in charge, every single day, every single week, there's a new, fresh bit of controversy. They're, they're, they're villainous people. They're very dislikable people. Very dislikable. It's got to a point where it's, they're so dislikable, Paul, that your fans in the cop have, have agreed to hold up a banner yeah. to get them out. That's 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 how dislikable they are. They've got a woman there that I don't, they're not football people myself themselves, right? Yeah. But you've got a woman there that any football fan would know. She works for the Sun. Yeah, she works for the Sun. She writes for the Sun, and although she. I've told her personally, I've sat in something in front of her and said to her personally, you need to leave that shit rag because it does nobody any favours. Anybody in football knows that that is the worst tabloid newspaper going. You shouldn't work for them. They're scumbags. They're, they're fucking, they're, they're wrong Yeah. And she sat and went, it's got nothing to do with West Ham. And they, she won't, she won't leave. And I, I you know, it, it gets to a point where, you look at the two owners and, and I think to myself, do you know what? As a club, obviously as a fan, I don't want to go down, but as a club, we are getting what we deserve. We're getting everything we deserve. It's a tough situation because I've seen a few conversations and, I, and, and they, they, they ring familiar with me and I've seen people who go, because what you get is you've always got a core at every, at every fan base and these people are entitled to this opinion, by the way, of... You just look. You just got to get on with supporting the team that's on the pitch. And I, 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 as a simple notion, I don't, I don't actually disagree with that because I think you should always look to get behind the players on the pitch because, as a role of a fan, you're in the stands. Your job is to go there and make noise, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But also, fans are the lifeblood of the football club. They're the people who are going to be there long after any owners have, have, have moved on, any managers moved on. So you do have a right to have, have a voice in how I think and how the club is run. But we also live in a culture now where people don't think fans' voices are worth anything. And I've seen I've seen the people saying, "Well, get over the stadium thing. Well, what's the look? Upton Park's gone. We can't go back." Which is fair, again, which is fair. And, and you can't fight against the owners. You can though, and that's the greatest trick that the, the, the bullshit owners pull is in making fans feel as though that there's nothing that could, they can do collectively. Whereas you know the simple fact of the matter is, if fifty thousand West Ham fans decided we're just not going to go to this game, you know the next home game, that eventually you know those those kind of statements they they have a tangible impact. But I, I mean, I, I've heard. 
that's there are there is momentum building for more protests. We 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 tried to do protests last year. I think the problem with with the protests is nobody's quite sure what they want. Yeah. You know, is the protest for change? Is the protest to to make them leave? Is the protest to force them out? Nobody can quite agree on on what that protest should should be. Yeah. You know, I, I believe it should be to force them out. Yeah. Uh, if the, if they go tomorrow, they've had a very nice earner out of us. Um, there's no there's no doubt about that. Um, but that's that's the thing. Every media outlet, so I mean, the media starting to turn on them wholeheartedly. But you hear like ex players of ours and 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 ex managers of ours saying, "Well, the fans just need to get behind the team." But well, we are behind the team. We turn up. We we, we sell out the stadium every week. Fifty five thousand, and we sell out our away allocations every week. We're we're fully behind the team. That, and that's where I think a lot of West Ham fans are getting frustrated is, you know, ex-players and ex-managers who, who's never really paid for a ticket, who never really um, have, have got that football fan culture where yeah. sort of you feel that ownership. Sam Allardyce was saying it on TalkSport last week. He's one of the worst because he just never understood West Ham. He never understood West Ham at all. Yeah. He'd, done a, he'd done a decent job for us, but he just never understood. I remember we beat Hull once 2-1. And the fans booed because it was it was so poor, and he, he couldn't understand why we was booing, and, yeah. and, and you know, and he just never got us as a culture. And he said, you know, you just need to get beyond the players. Well, these tickets aren't free, yeah, <laughs> yeah. For the, you know, they, yeah. We, we're paying fucking hand over fist to follow these people at home and away. It's tough, isn't it? Because whilst West Ham remain. A Premier League club, and obviously that's a that's you know very much up in the air at the moment. And you've got the you know the stadiums. It's 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 not a football stadium, but it's you know it looks looks the bit you know the business on on a, on a superficial level. And you spend the money on players. It's that I think there's a lot of people who, who find it very hard to to understand what's wrong in that. You know what I mean? That's that's the that's the tricky thing. And I get why you don't know what you're fighting for because. Some people might be thinking, "Well, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater by kicking off about about these kind of things." But you're right; it, it's an you have to have a, there's got to be a fundamental understanding of what is West Ham, and you guys are stuck between what you were, which was you know a, 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 a smaller but ultra passionate kind of you know had had good football a good football ethos but were prepared to fight as as well kind of thing and this notion of how trying to be one of the premier league super clubs uh, but no one's worked out how to how to to bridge the gap and in trying to bridge the gap you can end up being neither and end up being you know nothing ultimately well yeah that, that's that's it i think we tried to run before we could walk um the fans i, I think the move because they were so eager to convince everyone that this was the right thing to do, because if they hadn't said anything and just said, look, we're going to move from here to here, people would have just turned around and said, no, you know, we, we're not going. Uh, nobody wants to go. and all this. So they started to sort of fabricate these things. And I'm, not, I'm not, look, for legal reasons, I can't say they're lying, but, you know, allegedly they're lying, you know. Yeah. They say, yeah, we're going to have the money to compete with the Man United and Arsenal's if we move here and all that. In reality, we get an extra about ten million quid a year, and in the modern game, that's what's that? Nothing. Yeah, nothing. Um, but it's just the fact that they, yeah, they've spent money. Of course, they've spent money. But everybody spent money. Yeah. When I look at the table of of um, people that have that have spent more than us, Fulham spent more than us last year. Hull spent more than us. A couple of seasons ago, over the past four years, there's, there's clubs like Southampton that have spent more money. It's not it's not about spending the money, but when you look at the infrastructure of what they've spent it on, when you look at yeah, all right, Halea, in the past transfer window, Paul, they admitted they're chucking bids everywhere just to see what sticks, yeah. to see who's interested. Um, that's not the way to run a football club. No. You you know, we've got no scouts. They're relying on agents to bring us signings. Is a signing worried? Uh, is a, Sorry, is an agent worried about signing, fitting into your ethos of playing football and winning? Or is he worried about making you sign him for fucking big money oh, and true. putting money in his pocket? There's no, there's no, there's no structure there. There's no, the training grounds. I mean, I said this to Chris last time. And I made a bit of a joke of it, but the cra- training ground is, 
it, it was a it's a place called Rush Green. They bought it about 10, 15 years ago. I used to play football there. It's not changed much. Yeah. It's not changed much since then. That's that's how bad the training ground is. Yeah, they've laid a new bit of grass on it and put some advertising hoardings around it and they might have done the building up a, a tiny bit. It's There's definitely been- it's definitely got your initials where you fingered some bed around the back of the fucking changing rooms. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. But I, that's where I used to play football. Yeah. It, you know, it's... <clears throat> and then you look at the likes of Tottenham. Um, maybe we can we can put them in a different category because they've played in the Champions League for the sure. past four or five years and done very well. But but you look at the likes of Southampton. Um, I, the one for me, Nicky, I look at Everton and particularly given the situations of the clubs, you were you were right next to each other in the table going into you know uh, coming into the midway point you had you'd had very similar run of fixtures leading into that point you had a very difficult spell of fixtures coming out of it and Everton decided to you both decided to change managers Everton went and got arguably the most you know decorated pretty much the most decorated manager in world football and you guys went and went back to David Moyes and and that's the thing is that it's that West Ham have done this. West Brom used to do this a lot as well. It's this going from one extreme to the other. It's get a manager who purports to play football. That doesn't quite work, so lose your heads. Go and get someone who defends for the life for a bit and stave off relegation for a bit. Stick with them, but then get unhappy with the style of football, so go to another guy who plays football. And then back and forth and back and forth, and you've never got any consistent recruitment and, and never a consistent ethos. There is no, there is no obvious West Ham way that you can yeah. see and how the clubs how the clubs run on the pitch. Which is ironic, which is what we sort of built our name on, the West Ham way and all of this sort of stuff. There is no West Ham way anymore. It's gone. Um, the stadium's just knocked the bollocks out of everybody. Uh, not so much the stadium, but the move and, and what it's done to our culture. Mate, I've seen West Ham fans fighting in the stands in that ground like West Ham fans turning on each other I would expect it if you started on the away fans mate you know what I mean you've got a reputation to uphold but no like I've seen West Ham fans I saw I saw the, a few years ago I saw multiple fist fights amongst your own fans in the stands and that's it's just a small example of the whole of everything you're kind of you're kind of talking about it's not, yeah you, that, that has happened it, it's died down a little bit now I, I think the thing is, I think people are just fed up with fighting, <laughs> anything, fighting against the owners, fighting against each other. I think it's just, you know, the, the the fight is sort of going out of people, and the people that are most upset are starting. And this is what a dangerous thing is: the people that are most upset that have been following the club for years and years and years that are hardcore fans are saying, "I'm not going back anymore." Yeah, that's it. They, you know, they've 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 taken their last liberty. Look, they've always taken the piss out of us, but this is this is to the extreme, um, and then. I see a fight at Brighton, right next to me. A couple of geezers started punching each other's heads in. And what it was, there was a Brighton fan sitting in the stand. You know, a couple of Brighton fans wearing colours, wearing scarves. Nobody's challenged them. Nobody's done this. Nobody's done that. A kid went down last week um, to wave a flag. I say a kid, he's a a young man, um, with a GSB out T-shirt on. They banned him for the whole season. But they're letting away fans walking around out our stands in their colours and all of this sort of stuff. It got rescinded in the end, but it, yeah. it's just it's just a poor state of affairs um, football wise. Paul, well, talk to me about the football wise because obviously you've not won a league game since the first of January. Um, David Moyes again. I don't know what. I've never been a fan of David Moyes. I think he, he he did a very good job at Everton, but I also think he did a very good job of feathering his nest while he was doing it. Um, you should. I don't know what you what David Moyes is meant to be. I think he gets jobs like that because he's he's just in that bracket of Allardyce and Pulis and you know these these break glass managers that you bring in just to steady the ship for a little bit. But I don't know. I'm not. I, I haven't watched a lot of you to be fair. But it doesn't look like. I mean, he, he parked the bus against Man City, which I think is understandable to a point, but. He looks like a man who, who probably realises that a, a heavy defi- a couple more heavy defeats and he's probably not going to finish the season in charge. I'll be honest with you, I would have sacked him after Brighton. You look at that Man City game uh, on, on, on Wednesday. Um, we went out, you can't go, like as a, for a team like us who are, who are scrapping for our lives, yeah, I can understand a Man United or a Liverpool or something going there, um, setting up shop and, and trying to hit him on the counter. 
We didn't try and do that. We sat everybody in our own half. They've got possibly after you the, the, the greatest wealth of talent attacking wise that you, you, you know you you've got in a team, and you're not you're not even trying to give them anything to think about going back. So it's just basically it's just well they're just sitting on their halfway line, just just keep on going and going and going. It will break eventually, and that's what happened. You look at the corner that we conceded. We've, we've conceded so many in, in set pieces. Rodri goes to the near post. Nobody's followed him. Nobody's on the front post. Nobody's on the back post. That's, it's common. I mean, that's schoolboy stuff. That's stuff that I learned when I was in school. You know, it, it's, it's farcical. You look, you go back to the Brighton game, the, the game before. It was like circus, Paul. We was three one up and cruising. And the, the two goals we're given back to, to get back in it were, were like, it was like something out of a Benny Hill sketch. It, it, it was honestly, we, we, we just can't play football. We've got no confidence. We've got no, we've got no pace in the side, um, all around the pitch that is. And you go to Manchester City, look, you say you can, you can, you can see why he's sort of set up to defend. You're never going to get anything to defend when you can't defend. Yeah. Well, Man City are the <laughs> ultimate possession football team. They, 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 they exist. Thing is to, to go at them. Anyone that's gone there and got anything, has gone at them, given them something to think about. Wolves, 100%. Crystal Palace, yeah. uh, Norwich, yeah. have given them something to think about defensively. Um, and, and we didn't even do that. It just We're fighting for our lives on relegation. He's got £100 million worth of talent on the bench. That's the thing. and That's why I look at like Man City and Liverpool should be free hits for David Moyes and West Ham because there should be no expectation. So why not? Why not go come out swinging and try and try and land a knockout blow or try and bloody your nose? It might give the team a bit of confidence. You might get beat. You're gonna get. You're probably gonna get beaten anyway because that's just the that's the golfing quality. But if you even if you if you like land a good solid jab in there, you come away and you get to look back at that and go, that lads, look what you did there. You went and landed a blow on the the chin of the the, the, the Premier League champions the, or, or and this and the the European champions. Go and do that in the next game against a team that you can actually you can actually match. But you're right when you set your stall out to defend for your life. If that's why I say it feels to me like Moyes is is just doing damage limitation because again you know you not you shouldn't lose your job losing to City and Liverpool. But if you get absolutely annihilated, yeah. which I think he's that's all he's looking to avoid. I think at this point, um, he's just look he's just trying to he's trying to. Grip on to the last scraps of confidence and hope that he can galvanise them. But yeah, yeah, I mean, they won't. They won't sack him. Really? Sack him? No, no, they won't sack him. They've set out a They've sacked him before, Nicky. <laughs> yeah, they, but, I mean, yeah. They, it, it, to be fair, his contract come to the end and they just didn't renew it. It was a very short term contract. They won't sack him now. They give him eighteen months. He's de- they've decided he's their man. They, they are very stubborn when it comes to sacking managers. And you know, I watched that Brand Grant in a very similar situation as we are now, drag us all the way to the, to the bottom. And it was, it was only the, the fact that the day we got relegated, they went in and said, I, I, you know, I think you should uh, make your way now. We, it was already too late. They won't sack him now. We've got to, we've got to find something, but I'll be honest with you, Paul, we don't find anything this week. Well, I'm not going to, you know, for you, Nicky, in, in a general sense, I'm unhappy about that. But from a, my our perspective, yeah, it's the David Moyes thing. I can't. I, I just can't. Can't stand him. And I, and I, and it's and it annoys me that he he continue. You know, types of manager like him should have had the day in the Premier League. And I get it. I get like Pellegrini wasn't. It wasn't working for whatever for whatever reason. But I just I can't. I, I baffles me. It genuinely baffles me that there's still chairman out there who think. This is what they go for. Maybe it's because they spend too much time listening to talk sports, or they listen to you know they maybe they watch B in sports when you've got Keys and Gray using their old boys network to to get them new jobs or whatever. And you think this is the guy who's going to do it for us, but th- you need to be bold. There needs to be a long term plan put in place. You know you need to get someone you can get behind. I mean, look, even Everton haven't done Ferguson for a few for a month or so. It brought them all back in back on. Look at Chelsea. Lampard's not the best manager in the world. He might never actually get Lamp. Lampard might never win the Premier League, mm-hmm. but he's managed to give Chelsea fans something to believe in for a, for a change. And you see it, it didn't happen at Arsenal. Yeah, it's. Uh, do you reckon? What do you reckon? Then do you reckon you've got enough to stay up? No, I don't. I don't. I, I, God's honest truth, Paul. I, I always speak bluntly, and I always. Um... I've got a pretty good reputation on the Red Men, actually. I, they, they call me a bit the Oracle. 
<laughs> I'll, I'll because I've, I've, I've made a few uh, fair bold predictions that have come true but to be fair it, no I, I don't think we have I don't think it, and it's not we haven't got the quality um, I see a, a team a lot better than this go down in 03 yeah um, just because of the disorganisation just because they they just didn't have the bollocks at the end of the day and they had more bollocks in this lot and, I, you know, the only one with a bit of bollocks in them now is Noble, Rice. But, you know, they're playing the same position, more yeah. or less. Um, Noble can't do it anymore. Like, physically can't do it anymore. He, you know, he, he's chasing shadows. Um, if I was Rice, I'd be looking for a way out today. You know, it's inevitable that we're going to go down. We need a bit of a miracle. I said on... Um, on here last time that the only way we can we, we, we can get a result against you if we pray for rain um, it come about two weeks later <laughs> yeah, sick, absolutely. But, uh, there's there's no way I don't I, I can't see us getting out of this the only reason we can get out of it is if we pick up a result here or there um, until the end of the season and I've looked at the other teams fixtures Villas in particular are are horrendous. You know, are, we, we've got this little run of games now, but they've got some horrendous, horrendous fixtures. Um, but you know, when you look at it, it, it coming later, you sort of get into that sort of period where they're going to be scrapping, and and the uh, the rep, Liverpool have already got a league title wrapped up. You know, the Champions League qualification places are, are more or less wrapped up. And you've got a load of prima donnas that are, that, that are looking at the beach in the yeah. next few weeks. Um, so I'd rather have the yard of games later. Yeah. Yeah, when it doesn't matter. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, do you expect Moyes to do anything different from the Man City game? If, if he's got any sense, he will. It, you know, the thing is, as you say, Paul, look, the, the reason I think why he didn't go for it at the, at the City game is... Um, 4 0 would have put us into the bottom two. So I think he, he went there with that mindset. Yeah. It doesn't matter, is it? If you're going to drop into the to the bottom two on goal difference, ultimately it, it doesn't mean anything at the end of the season if you get enough points to you know to 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 pip pip the others to the post. And yeah. that's what you've got to do. We've got to, we've got to go at you. Yeah. Um and that worries me greatly because I've seen the way that, that Liverpool tear well, you've drawn once this season. Um, you tear everybody to pieces. Um, I could see a heavy defeat here, but no, I, I don't think he will. I don't think he'll go for it. I think he'll be uh, looking at that Southampton game and thinking, right, we, you know, that that's the one. That's the one. Sounds well. Yes, mate. All again. All the best. All the best in life. All the best with the fight after Monday. You're five games away for the title, mate. I've got to say, um, last time on this channel. Congratulations, because um, it's well deserved, and I've I've seen this coming for a couple of years, to be honest. Oh well, yeah. Let's just get over the line. Hey? Um, but listen, yeah. I, uh, I'm going to be over on West Ham Fan TV's channel, chatting a little bit about Liverpool. So make sure you head over there and subscribe to their channel as well. Uh, leave us your thoughts, and I think discussed in the comments section underneath of that. Nikki, thank you very much for taking the time uh, when you could clearly be sat doing anything that would be more fun than this. Um, but yeah, WWE Network before. <laughs> Before we go, let's go. <laughs> nice one, Dickie.